Hello and welcome to Just One More Thing, a weekly podcast about knitting and crafting. I'm Janessa, also known as Just One More Thing on Ravelry, and I'm going to apologize right off the top. It is super, super cold here in Missouri today. So um, I have my central heating on and it's very loud. Um, so usually we have like a much quieter natural gas heater that like heats the entire house but when it's freezing outside and we have to worry about our pipes freezing i have to turn on the central heat which like heats from the floor so that our pipes don't freeze um, it it's not nearly as efficient as our natural gas heater and like i you guys don't care about this this is a story about how we heat our house <laughs> Woohoo! riveting entertainment right but i do want to apologize for the noise i can't kick it off for the entirety of me podcasting and it's it's gonna kick on a lot so i'll try to i have the um ipad much closer to my face hello <laughs> and um i am going to do my best to talk much louder so that hopefully i don't have to edit out too much of the I'm just hoping it's not going to be too distracting, but if it is, I apologize. Uh, another announcement, it's Tuesday, the 16th, I think, is that right? It's something like that. Yeah, the 16th of January. Um, I could not get Brooklyn to give me enough time over the weekend to record with her. So my co-host is missing, it's just me today. I do, however, have a little video of her being super crafty on a snow day that I'll stick in a little bit later when we get to, to that section. Okay, I think that's enough announcements. Let's talk knitting. Um, I still do not have any finished objects. I'm super, super close to finishing a couple things, but no really... Um, definitive finished objects to show you. So we're going to talk works in progress. And I have like an entire pile over here. So I'm just going to kind of like work my way through the pile. These are in no particular order. I will however say that this first one is a spoiler. So if you watch Cozy Up with the Knit and Sisters, Stitch and Sisters, I think I always get the name of their podcast wrong. Um, if you're doing the My Sister Shawl Knit Along, the Mystery Knit Along, and you don't want to be spoiled, give me like 10 minutes, fast forward, and um, hopefully I'll be done talking about it by then. <laughs> this is going to spoil all the way up through clue three. So if you don't want clues one, two, or three, look away. I did all of this yesterday all of my knitting on this yesterday. Um, I started clue three. So let's unwind some things here. And clue two, let's see here. Clue one started about there with the provisional cast on and changed colors. And then I think we went up through the eyelets on clue one and changed colors again. So then clue two was all of this lace. Lovely, lovely lace. And if like me, you are a chart knitter, I did post my chart and I think another person posted their handwritten chart on the Ravelry spoiler thread in, their, in the Cozy Up uh, group. So clue three took us through that color change and then we started decreasing ever so slightly in that color change. So clue three is, here comes their cushioning, <laughs> is back to an eyelet section but we're still decreasing. And another color change, still decreasing. More mesh and broken rib or garter and mesh and broken seed and the last section of mesh to a bind off. 
I did hack my bind off just a little bit. So I think this one called for 15 lace holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 was like where it should have ended. Um, I kept on going until I could decrease and I had just my I cord edges and then I grafted those edges together instead of doing the bind off like they had written. Um, partly because I was not paying attention while I was doing this section, I was watching TV um, and partly because I like grafting it together better and the way when I looked back on it, the way that they had it written didn't make a ton of sense to me. I do have this one random loop that I need to tuck in and tack down somewhere. But anyway, so that was most of clue three, but they didn't stop there. They had you go back and pick up your provisional cast on, which was right about in here, I think. And they had you like basically finish off this lace section so that it matched this one down here below it. And then um, it calls for a broken seed or garter and then another lace section, I believe. So I'm not done with clue three and this is why. <laughs> Womp, womp, womp. I, when I ordered my yarn from Knit Fix to dye for this particular project, I really did not pay attention to the yardage. Rookie mistake. Um, I just was like, yeah, 100 grams, 100 gram skeins, you know, pretty standard, whatever. I also really wasn't paying attention to the fact that I was buying sport weight and not true fingering weight because I use them so interchangeably. Again, pay attention to the yardage, not just the grams. It makes a big difference. You were supposed to have like 390 yards of color A and each skein that I bought was 275. So that's why I'm running out of yarn. Some other people on the boards mentioned that they were getting kind of low, like 16 grams kind of low. On yarn this is way less than 16 grams <laughs> first of all like I do not know that I would be able to finish my seed stitch and I'm assuming do a color change I don't think I have enough left for even that so I have put a big old pause on this project I'm gonna wait and see what clue 4 brings um, if it really is like mirroring this whole side um, just in a different direction. I think I can go back and like maybe scavenge um, like some of these sections and make them shorter and like make this section longer and this section longer because I have quite a bit more yarn of these two. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's the yellow that I seem to be very, very short on at the moment. So I'm just going to kind of wait and see what clue four brings and if I can really discern the direction that the shawl's taking. Um, and then as a last resort, I'm going to order more yarn. Um, it's not expensive yarn from Knit Picks that I'm using for this. So it's not like I have to buy you know, a $25 skein just to finish up one little section and I'm going to have a ton left over. I'm not going to have a ton left over because they're short skeins because it's sport weight. My only concern with having to buy more yarn is I dyed this myself and I didn't really take notes. Um, because I was just dying one skein of each thing. So I was just kind of playing around. I, I kind of remember what I did for each one. Um, and I think since this was kettle dyed, I can probably get pretty close to the yellow. But if I end up having to re-dye the blue or the gray, I, I don't know how close I can get either of those. So um, that is a concern. 
um, having to re-dye yarn that I didn't really take notes on. And it's not like I have ever tried to recreate a skein of yarn before. Like, I'm not a professional yarn dyer. I'm not even an, you know, like, amateur sell it for a profit yarn <laughs> dyer. I, I've never recreated a skein before. So I'm going to try. We'll just have to kind of wait and see. And like I said, if like when clues four and five come out, if I think I can, and it may mean ripping the entire thing and starting over again, which is fine. This was not a long slog of knitting. Each clue took me a day at the most. Um, so if I really need to rip it out and start over again, I can do that. I'm not worried about doing that. Um, we'll just kind of have to wait and see. Big pause. That was more than 10 minutes, so if you kind of like were fast forwarding and got a little spoiled, I'm sorry. But I don't think, I don't think that's the case with any of my viewers. So, that is that project. Now, I'm going to move on to my other knit along. One of my other knit alongs that I'm working on. And that is my Comfort Fade Cardi. I finished the yoke and separated the sleeves and I've done a whopping mm, inch and a half maybe maybe an inch or so from the underarms um, and I have officially faded into yarn number three so um, it went from like a very kind of grayish yellow with lots of bits of purple and turquoise and things in it into a much creamier, um, with like browns and turquoise into a darkerish version of that same color into, um, this one is much more like gold with bits of brown in it. So that's kind of the fade so far. And it's moving along quite nicely. I finally got uh, my longer cord out. Um, that came in the mail. And my wooden tips came in the mail for the size that I needed. Um, and the knitting has been much easier on my hands. Using those wood needles and that super short cord, it was just driving me bonkers. So this is kind of flying now that I've got the right equipment. I definitely um, need wood needles when I knit. I don't know why I have such problem. I'm a loose knitter and so metal needles, like everything just falls off the needle for me, especially if I'm working with super wash. Um, and I need like a really long, like I need to be able to spread the stitches out for them to move because when they start getting bunched up, I'm like constantly trying to fight them. And I do it all the time because I'm cheap and I don't like having to buy new things. But for this one, I'm glad that I went ahead and got the super long cable. The other nice thing about this super, super long cable is I can now try this on without having to take it off the needles. That's nice. Um... So Comfort Fade Cardi, not much to say about that other than it's being worked on. I'm trying to make a new pile over here without disturbing this pile. Um, did I mention my Christmas present that I got for my wonderful sister? This thing has been such a lifesaver and my kids think it's hilarious when I wear it. Um, but I'll, I'll point it down so you're not blinded. But it has like three settings. Um, and it's just a little flashlight and it hangs around my neck. And these things are flexible so I can point them wherever I need to point them. Usually they're pointing like this. <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll just talk about the thing that I wear this for the most. Is working on my embroidery. Um... Even though, like, I'll have all the lights on, this 
spread was so dark and my eyesight so bad that I was shining the light on it <laughs> so that I could see where I was putting my needle and where my needle was coming up. But I'll try to, there it goes. So this is, she's whiskey in a teacup. Um, I did decide to go ahead and make teacup look like whiskey. However, I found a tutorial that talked about using fewer plies of the embroidery floss. Up here, I'll show you real close, I used the full six ply floss. And so you can see like it's really uneven in places, especially that W looks horrid. Horrid, horrid, horrid. From way back, like hanging on the wall, I doubt that anyone's really going to know or care. But I used half the number of plies when I started doing teacup, and it just looks a little neater, a little thinner. And I also found ways to um, make the turns using satin stitch a little easier. So um, I will try to remember the link for the tutorial I watched, but it was um, Namaste Embroidery. Um, I think if you just look up Namaste Embroidery on YouTube, her videos will come up. Um, the other thing that I talked about last time when I worked on this is that I was going to try to go in and shadow or shade in the satin stitch that I did right here. Um, that did not work well at all. I am seriously considering cutting all of that out, like just snipping all those threads and pulling them out and then taking like a couple of threads of the white and like one of the blue and holding them together while I satin stitch. And I think that'll give me the effect that I want. And also going outside, see how I stitched inside my back stitch. I think going on the outside like I did with whiskey and with teacup will look better. So for those of you who are new, I'm just learning how to embroider. This is all really new to me. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of learning as I go on some of these things. But those are my tips if you've never embroidered before. Um, that's probably the most helpful. But yeah, it's nearly done. I just have that little bit of teacup to do. And then if I decide to, to do that, redo that, I will. I also feel like I should maybe go back and put in just a little thicker line on the H. It doesn't look quite as, it, it just looks kind of weird up there all on its own. Even though that's how the font was um, when you like hang it on a wall hold it way back here on the wall. I don't know, maybe, yeah, it needs a little extra so it makes sense. So it can, so it can be seen. But I am having fun with the embroidery. That's been a lot of fun. Okay, back to knitting for a little bit. Whoops. So, my other knit along that I'm working on is for the Off Your Needles with the Grocery Girls, with, and that's through Craftsy. They are hosting a knit along for this shawl called the Scania shawl. Somewhere in here I want to say that they actually told you how to pronounce it. Maybe. Yes. Oh. There it is. Scan, scan, scania. It's Swedish. So if anyone speaks Swedish, there you go. There's a couple more pictures of it. So, um, Craftsy supposedly made this like 
super idiot proof to pick your colors. Um, they, you were supposed to pick five colors, two of them you use more of than the others, so you were supposed to make those the colors that you really, really liked, um, and it went from like a lightest, light, medium, kind of medium tone dark to darkest color were, were the five that they picked. So I picked these two as my colors that I really, really liked that I would wear a lot of. Um, I really, I wear a lot of the yellow and I wear a lot of the burgundy. So I thought, well, these would be the two colors that I would pick for the, the most. And then there were two really nice neutrals, kind of this ecru and this oatmeal. This was my lightest, this was my light. And then for my dark, I picked a chocolate brown. I thought, well, those, those three kind of complement each other nicely. And then these would be my pops of color. I'm slightly disappointed with my color choice. And this is another one where I kind of want to rip it out and start over again. <laughs> The shawl is super easy to knit, but I'm not happy. I'm not super happy with my color choices. So the whole idea behind the shawl is that, um, let me get the big picture up again. You get that effect by holding two strands of yarn together and it's marled and then this fringe is created by knitting a garter stitch edge that you unravel. Okay, so here's what I have so far. Um, holding it back here isn't quite so bad. I don't know. I'm not crazy about my color choices. Um, so for a lot of the really big sections, it's having me hold these two together or these two together. And so I'm getting a lot of, and from way, way back, the yellow and the brown isn't so, so bad, but close up, I don't like it. And the yellow and the magenta together, I'm not a huge fan of that either. I can deal with, like, the, I like this stripe. I love this stripe. If I didn't have the magenta in here, the yellow and the brown wouldn't bug me so much. But I feel like that magenta is really throwing the whole thing off. I don't know. It's like it's like it's too much. I don't know. It's just too much. Do you agree with me? I really would love to hear your opinions on this. I'm not happy when I'm knitting it. I don't know from far away when it's all bundled up, is it going to make that big of a difference? I don't know. So this is another one that I've kind of got on hold because I just don't know how I feel about the color combination. I feel like maybe if I had done another brown, like a lighter brown instead of the magenta, I would I would like it a lot better. So, um, the magenta is a really pretty color on its own. I feel like it's a color that I would wear in the fall, especially, um, on its own. But these two colors together, held together, it's not doing it for me. So, I may end up reordering 
those. And the yarn is Cloudborn. It's their Highland Superwash Soft Twist. It's a really nice, it's pretty, it feels durable, but it's still super, it's soft. Like, um, it, it's nice to wear. I would wear it for hats and all kinds of things like that. Um, there's kind of the information on it. So, uh, yeah, I'm considering reordering this color and ripping all of this out and starting over again. I don't know. I don't know what to do. The thing what, the thing is, I got this with their 50% off kit coupon and to reorder, I wouldn't get this at 50% off. I don't know how, I honestly don't know how expensive that Cloudborn is. I don't think it's very expensive, but my yarn budget for the year, like, is pretty much gone. <laughs> Like, I, you'll see here in a minute. I've pretty much stocked up on my yarn for the year, and I'm supposed to, like, hold off and knit from stash until then. And I don't have anything in my stash, I don't think, that would go with the brown and the, the yellow. So, we will see. I'm still debating. And... I honestly would love your opinions on what you think about those color choices. Do they work? Do they not work? Is it just me? Like, am I just being overly critical? Would you wear it? Because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm at a loss on what to do with that one. Um... all that up again okay last work in progress is a sample for the my way hat pattern that I'm working on publishing it's getting like I'm pretty it's written up there's not much left to do other than like have somebody look at it and edit it um, it's going to be a free pattern, so I'm not entirely sure that I'm going to have it test knit or tech edited. Um, I'm still debating maybe I should have it tech edited, but probably definitely since it's free, not test knit it. I've knit it. This is like the fourth or fifth time I've knit it, so I'm pretty confident in the instructions. It's not a hard pattern. Um... So, I don't know. I might just have, like, a friend look over it and make sure there aren't any typos. <laughs> um, so, this is, I'm not going to put it on because I'm knitting on double points. Um, all my other needles in this size were on other projects. I usually magic loop, but there you can kind of get an idea. I'm afraid if I put it on, it will, the needles will pop off because of where it's at right now. I don't know, maybe I can get it on. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I can't get it all the way down. That's about as far as it'll go. But as you can see, it's a really stretchy pattern. Makes these nice diamond shapes once it's all stretched out. And this, um, whew, the new haircut holds up well to hat hair, I'll tell you that. Um, the reason I'm calling it the My Way hat pattern is because I am writing it in such a way that um, it's going to be a cowl, an ear warmer, a messy bun hat, and a full on beanie. So there's like four different, um, just by using different stitch counts and binding off in different places, you basically have four patterns in one. So. That's why it's the Maya way. So this is being knit out of some of my Christmas slash birthday yarn that I acquired from Prairie Dice Studio. This, um, I can't remember. I think it's just one lady, maybe in Saskatchewan, maybe in Alberta. 
I can't remember where she um, is from. She's definitely from Canada. I will find out and put the correct information maybe here <laughs> if I can find out. Um, I heard about her through the Stitch and Sisters watching that podcast. Um, they talk about her quite a few times. Started following her on Instagram and over right before Christmas, she announced she was doing a Boxing Day sale. She was having a really great deal where you could get, it was a, maybe 25% off, but then she also does free shipping on orders like over a certain amount. Basically, I had a lot of money to spend with Christmas slash birthday money and took super advantage of the fact that I was going to A, get free shipping and B, the um, exchange rate here is uh, in our favor in the United States. Like, buy all your yarn from Canada for a while until that changes. Um, anyway, I, I basically got a huge deal on yarn from her and it's all lovely and amazing this was the evergreen it's the superwash merino worsted so there's a nice close-up it's a super super dark tonal green and it's amazing i love it um i'm just gonna stick all of that together so it doesn't get lost again I hate knitting on double points. I feel like I know they have protectors, but I don't knit with double points enough to warrant protectors. And I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Let's see. What's next? Let's talk about a couple of acquisitions I've made. Um, since I was just talking about Prairie Dye Studios, let's talk about the other yarn that I got with her nice super sale. Okay, so here's all the other yarn that I got. can't even hold it all it's so much okay so I got this which is a really lovely gray tweed and this is on her tweed sock base there we go tweed sock 400 yards 115 grams And that was the color Silver Bells. It's just so pretty. Look at all the tweedy bits in it. The orange and the yellow tweed on that silver color is just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And then I got these, which are on her Anna's sock base. Go. That's an 80 20 blend, 400 yards, 115 grams. Um, and this was the smoke colorway. So it's that really light cream to gray to black. Um, I don't know if that stripes when it's knit up or how that will work, but I just thought that was really, really pretty. And then um, these were single skeins, but I thought that they could easily work together in a project if I'm fading something. Um, they're both kind of speckled. This one is on her BFL sock and it's called Painted Horse. Look how gorgeous that is. That is right up my alley with those reds, those bits of red and the black and the brown. You know what would look really pretty with this if I end up going and getting that something different yarn wise for that shawl 
How pretty would those look together? Because that burgundy really matches up. I could do something special with those. Um, that might that might have been the deciding factor to go look on Craftsy and see what other yarn they had, or dig through the stash and see what else I have that'll work with that yellow and brown and cream. And then this is also on BFL sock. It's called Sea Urchin. So it's lots of greens and browns. And it's kind of a speckledy striped skein. So I'm super, super happy with all of the yarn that I got from Prairie Dye Studio. Um, I definitely kind of want to save this for um, like my own designs. I don't know. There might be something that comes up that just absolutely cries out for these types of skeins, but I kind of want to use my special hand dyed yarn to create something um, of my own design that I'm going to publish and like use these for samples or something. So who knows what they will be, but they are in the stash. Um, I already, like I showed you, started knitting up the evergreen um, into the hat that I'm getting ready to publish. Um, there was also some like knit picks yarn that got acquired, but it was mostly bare. So I'm not going to show that, but I am going to show you this next little acquisition. Um, I am lucky enough to live near Hamilton, Missouri, which is the home of the Missouri star quilt company. Um, I know that I have seen several podcasters mention Missouri Star Quilt Company as buying from them online, and they have a great online presence. They have lots and lots of tutorials on YouTube. They have a great online fabric store. Um, but what you may not know, and if you're local, you definitely need to go check them out. In Hamilton, Missouri, what they did is they came in and they bought up all of these old kind of buildings that were being they were kind of run down it's kind of that small town America thing where you know there used to be banks and it was the home Hamilton Missouri was the home of JC Penney so it was like the flagship JC Penney store um, all kinds of different businesses were in these nice downtown buildings but then as they went out of business as people moved to Kansas City or to St. Louis or you know um, these buildings weren't getting repurposed and reused for anything. So they kind of came in and they bought like the entire downtown, almost the entire downtown. And they've refurbished all these buildings and they have lots of different, um, shops. I wonder what I did with At one point, I had it over here. Here it is. So, here's our visitor's guide. So, as you can see, all of these green buildings with the star on them, and where they have two, that's like a downstairs and an upstairs. So, they bought out like that whole side of the street, and they've got this, you know, whole big building, and, um, that's kind of their little like visitor's guide to downtown. And then all these others are just other little shops and like dining and things. Um, so they have tons and tons of shops and each store has its own little theme. So they have their main shop and then they have Penny's Quilt Shop, which um, is all of their um, textures and hues they have a seasonal th a shop for like the different you know christmas fabrics and easter fabrics and whatever they have the mercantile which stores all of their 1930s and civil war reproduction fabric um they have a license to sew which is all of their licensed fabrics so like disney or sports teams 
They have a machine shed, which is where they sell sewing machines. They have a kids and a baby, a modern. They have one whole store for backing and trims, primitives and wools, florals. They even have a man's land, which is basically like a place where you can go and sit and watch TV and have snacks. So like set your husband down there and you go shopping for fabric and then you come back and pick them up. Um, anyway, I went into the primitives and wool because, and I, it's been a long time since I've been there. I think I went like right when they opened, but at one point they were selling yarn. It was a very small part of that shop was dedicated to selling yarn and it was just basic yarn. It wasn't any real fancy schmancy hand painted or anything like that. It was like your, um, your Plymouth yarn it was like kind of, you know, your basic yarn shop yarn, not quite acrylics, um, big box store type yarn. It was that step in between. So they're doing away with selling yarn. They're still going to have all their great fabrics, but they're doing away with selling yarn. Sad. Um, but, but I can understand there's not a huge demand for yarn shops where we live here in the middle of nowhere, Missouri. Um, most of the yarn shops, you find more of them like in the actual like Kansas City or Columbia or St. Louis. Um, and even there, they're kind of sparse. So, <coughs> excuse me. So when I heard that they were discounting and getting rid of all their yarn, I thought, well, maybe I should go look and see. And that's, they were having a 50% off all their yarn. Um, and so I picked up, I basically saw this color it's a real basic gray color 240 it doesn't really say what color 240 is but it is a a taupe color oatmeal gray taupe and I basically went in and I was like well 50% off of that and I grabbed the whole bin like there were nine skeins in there that I got for about twenty dollars. Yeah, little little over twenty dollars, and I got two fat quarters for Brooklyn. I think twenty one dollars was my total. So as you can see, fifty percent off that. I think it was more than fifty percent off when I did it on my calculator. I was like, oh, I think I got a bigger discount than advertised. So. This whole sack is full of that one color of Plymouth Yacht yarn. <laughs> um, and Brooklyn's like, well, mommy, why in the world are you buying so much? And I told her that um, this is like a worsted yarn. And it's 75% acrylic, 25% wool. So it's not like, it's a nice blend. But it's also not the most expensive yarn in the block. And... At that price, like I could make a sweater out of this for myself um, and not break the bank. So that's the plan for this is to make, I have a couple of different sweaters that I want to make. And I think um, like a worsted boxy is what this will become. Pretty sure. If I check, if I remember my yardage right, that's what this will end up becoming. And it'll be just a nice neutral sweater that I can wear out and about. And not worry and like not worry about being precious with it. Does that make sense? I think so. So, um, another acquisition I made that day was this was at Michael's. But how cute is that? <laughs> it's basically like a learn to embroider. But I liked the fabric and the hoop that came with it, and it comes with floss. But I think. I don't know if I'm going to applique a llama on. I think I might actually, um, like, use, I have some hand-spun llama yarn, and I think I might make my llama out of, like, actual llama yarn, um, and kind of do, like, a funky llama for my funky fiber animal wall that is slowly going to grow behind me. One day you'll actually see the funky fiber animals down here. Right now they're all kind of up high. Um, so that kind of rounds up my crafting. 
but I do want to show you a couple of the things that Brooklyn's been working on, even though she's not here. Um, I will kind of post some pictures as I talk, but the last time that we saw you, she was just about to turn 11 years old. It was just right before her birthday. And one of the gifts that we got for her was this teeny tiny precious sewing machine. Um, this is from, I think it's Hetrel, Hetrel. I found it on Amazon. It was in like the $25 range. So not bad for what it is. It does run, you can plug it in and run it through electricity, but you can also put in batteries and it runs off of four AA batteries. <laughs> I don't know how long you would be able to sew on the battery power, but um, it is a super lightweight, like whole, like super, super lightweight um, sewing machine. It only has two speeds, a low and a high. Um, you, this, is basically you can run it off of pushing a button or you can plug in and it has a pedal that you can treadle from. You do have to wind bobbins to have, this is the thread for the bobbin. Um, and then it has another bobbin down there for your under thread. <coughs> so um, that's a little bit of a pain. You can't just put a spool of thread up there, but it also kind of gives you a nice idea if you're running low, if you put them in at the same time, if you're running low on this bobbin thread, you're also running low on this bobbin thread. So you can kind of um, get an idea. You don't end up making quite the, as many mistakes about running out of, you know, you're sewing along and you think you're sewing. Turns out you ran out of your bobbin thread halfway through the project and you have to go back and re-sew it all, which I've done. Um, so... I like that part about it. It's kind of a pain to, I'm not a super fan of the tensioning um, because turning this seems to make no difference at all. The thread still gets stuck in here. So like when you're done and you want to pull this thread out so that you can cut off enough that it doesn't, um, like that top thread just doesn't pull very easily. It doesn't seem like when you're trying to um, pull the thread out in order to cut it so that when you start it, it doesn't unthread the needle, which has been another big problem for us. Um, this comes up so high that if you don't have like a really good tail out the back here, you're going to unthread your needle. But the thing that has been perfect for Brooklyn is this high low setting. When she was using my sewing machine, she had a really big problem with the foot pedal and it would go way too fast for her. This one, the low speed is the perfect speed for her to be able to like practice sewing things together. And her, I'm, I'm not super great at sewing. Like that's not my main craft. <laughs> I, I don't have a lot. I have basic, basic knowledge in this is how a sewing machine works. You try to get a straight line wrong sides to get like really super basic stuff is what I know about sewing so I'm not able to help her a ton but it turns out that all she really wanted to do was take fun fabric and sew it together she didn't want to learn how to make the perfect seam she didn't want to know how to make a perfectly straight line she had no interest in matching threads to fabrics she, I mean none of that all she wanted to do was she had this fabric and this fabric and she wanted to sew them together. <laughs> um, and so this little machine is perfect for that. We had a snow day right after her birthday, which meant that she got to spend an entire day sewing on this little sewing machine. And the video that I'm about to show you is super sped up, but it is her making this. It's a little mermaid. As you can see, 
you can see all of the threads and all of the seams and everything. Um, a lot of it, like the facial features and everything, she used a marker to draw on. You can see she like used a marker to show like the hair. But she made a little mermaid. And this is really all she wanted to be able to do was take pieces of fabric and sew them together into shapes. Um, <coughs> I'll also throw up a picture at the very end. She took a lot of pieces of fabric and um, made dresses, like dress shapes, and then wrote really kind of inspirational messages on them. And then I helped her by tacking it onto a piece of heavy scrap paper, like um, scrapbooking cardboard paper. And we put that down inside her binder for school. And so it was kind of like this own little creative design thing that she had done. Um, she literally has spent like the entire day that day sewing. She made clothes for all of her little toys. She's done all kinds of things, but it really is just her cutting out shapes and sewing them together. The threads don't even seem to have to match. She doesn't care about any of that. And I'm not going to correct her. I'm not going <laughs> to uh, rain on her creative parade at this moment because I just want her to get a feel for I get a feel for it and for the creativity later on when she wants to do like an actual quilt or an actual project yeah we will sit down and we will talk about matching the top thread and you know s seaming things so that you can't see it blah, blah 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 we'll do all of that at a later date and it'll probably take place with like her grandma who sews a little bit better than I do or my mom who sews a little bit better than I do, or I might, um, incorporate the help of my aunt who actually like, is really great at sewing. I also have several friends in town who quilt really well. Um, and you know, they might, they might be, uh, talked into giving a sewing lesson here or there at a later date, at a much later date when that's what she's interested in. for right now. We're just buying little like fat quarters and those like charms the charm packs of fabric and she's just going to town sewing things together that's it so here's a quick little video of her sewing the mermaid <laughs> she, I, I did not realize that she had her iPad set up the entire time. It wasn't until I almost knocked it over and she was like, oh, what are you doing? I was working on that. Um, that I was like, oh, you, you took a video of yourself sewing that. That's cool. So I, I told her I would edit it in such a way that we could put it on the podcast. 
Um, so that has been her big crafting thing. She's still doing lots of the beading and the making of earrings and drawing. Um, some of her birthday money went to buying Sharpie markers, which I was reluctant to let her have because her little brother still has this idea that the wall is his easel. Um, but yeah, so she, she's still doing lots of drawing and drawer making and other fun crafting things, but the sewing machine has kind of taken over her life at the moment and that's kind of fun too. So, um, that's all I have. And I have been blathering for over an hour, which is more than we ever do when it's Brooklyn and I together. I guess I just had a whole lot to talk about. So I'm going to let y'all go and we will see you next week, maybe with Brooklyn. I don't know. It it really depends on when I can get her to sit down and like pay attention for more than 30 minutes and not be bothered by the little brother who all he really wants to do is get on here and make funny faces. If there is a way to, for him to podcast funny faces, he will one day do that. But for right now, we have to try to work between everyone's schedules. And that's hard to do. But not your problem, right? <laughs> so I hope you have a great week. Stay warm because it's freaking cold here in the States. And um, I'm sure that my friends in Canada are like, you have nothing to complain about. It's zero degrees in the United States and they're up there sitting in 40 below going, what are you complaining about? <laughs> That's spring. <laughs> it's cold for me, okay? Um, anyway, stay warm, have fun knitting, have fun crafting, and we will see you next week.